Welcome to the News Hour. There have been few incidents in six months of war in Gaza that have created the level of outrage that leaders across three continents express today. Overnight, Israel killed seven members of the charity World Central Kitchen, one Palestinian and six foreigners, including one dual American-Canadian, as well as an Australian and Europeans. The president of the U.S. called the group's founder, the chef Jose Andres, to express his heartbreak. Israel called the killings unintended and vows to investigate. Nick Schifrin begins our coverage. In the words of the World Central Kitchen, this was a targeted attack a direct hit on the group's armored vehicle, incinerating everything and everyone inside. All that was left intact, a metal plate with the group's logo. They came here from all over the world to feed the hungry. They leave in the white body bags borne by this war's more than 30,000 victims. Among them, the group's Palestinian driver, Saif Abu Taha. This was all a mistake, said Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Unfortunately, in the last day, there was a tragic incident of an unintended strike of our forces on innocent people in the Gaza Strip. This happens in war. We are checking this thoroughly. We are in touch with the government, and we will do everything for this not to happen again. But World Central Kitchen says it coordinated with the Israeli military as a convoy left its warehouse in Deir el by the sea in central Gaza. Israeli munitions hit an initial vehicle. The Israeli newspaper Haaretz reports that World Central Kitchen workers then moved to another vehicle that was struck and then a third vehicle that was struck as they traveled on or next to the coastal road that Israel designates for humanitarian aid. Hello everyone, Damien Chikin from Cairo. Damien Sobel from Poland recently showed a warehouse full of supplies to feed 20,000 Gazans. Hey, this is Zomi and Chef Olivier. We're at the Jirabalak. While Zomi Frankcom was known by everyone as Zomi, she was Australian and in March showed off the World Central Kitchen's Gaza chef and the meals he prepared. Her friends said when others faced their darkest moments, she was a shining light of comfort. Last night, both their passports were covered in blood. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. And, uh, this is just uh, completely uh, unacceptable. Uh, Australia expects full accountability for the deaths of aid workers. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. We shouldn't have a situation where people who are simply trying to help their fellow human beings are themselves at grave risk. Multiple victims were British. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. We were asking Israel to investigate what happened urgently because clearly there are questions that need to be answered. The war in Gaza has been the deadliest ever for humanitarian workers. The UN says at least 196 have been killed since Hamas's October 7 terrorist attacks. U.S. officials cite poor Israeli coordination and deconfliction. Today, Defense Minister Yoav Gallant promised to establish an independent investigation and brief NGOs on the findings, and to open a joint IDF international NGO situation room. Front lines Chief military spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari. We will get to the bottom of this, and we will share our findings transparently. Back in northern Gaza, amid the ruins of Gaza City, lies the damage done to what was once Gaza's biggest hospital, Al-Shifa. The World Health Organization said today the heart of Gaza's health system had been ripped out. The Israeli military says a two-week operation by its equivalent of Navy SEALs killed or detained more than 700 terrorists hiding within the buildings. The Palestinian health ministry says hundreds were civilians, and the UN says 20 patients died. After the World Central Kitchen incident, aid organizations are suspending their Gaza operations as the UN warns that Gaza is on the brink of famine. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Nick Schifrin.